Kanye West. Kanye. Oh. It's going a little crazy, but I love, man, I love him. In three, two, one. Thank you for joining us. It's another episode of Jabron's Place. I am here with the one and only Flawless Brandon Gonzalez. Is it Flawless Brandon Gonzalez? Or Brandon Flawless Gonzalez? Uh, Brandon Flawless Gonzalez works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that's when when you were boxing. That's that right, was your right, that right, was your, right, your pretty yeah. boy Floyd. Or yeah. that was your that was your that was your name. Hey man, listen, I wanted to start out actually by apologizing to you. Um, you had actually reached out to me like two years ago when I was doing the podcast originally, and okay. you said, "Hey, uh, I'd love to come on and and just talk about boxing. You're you're, inter- you're interested in talking about martial artists." Right. And you know what had happened was right around that time I was having a little bit of success with podcasting. People were um, were tuning in. I didn't have a I didn't have like a like a terrible like a great audience. Right. But I had um, you know a little bit of a, of, of, a, of a platform, and I was kind of one of the one of the first people locally starting to do it. Okay. And folks were noticing on on Facebook, and around the same time, uh, someone had said to me. You know, because I was just trying to figure out where do I go with this podcast thing, you know, and, I'll, and just as a quick aside, I'll tell you, I'm just kind of doing it for its own pleasure now. Sure. And, it, and it's led to uh, it's led to some great opportunities professionally and it's helped market my business. So that's kind of what I feel like I'm getting out of it. Mm-hmm. If I was going to say it was just a strict business decision. Right. It's not a strict business decision. This is a passion for me. But at, the, at that time, when you had reached out to me, uh, like right before you had reached out to me. Someone had said to me, you know, a lot of people, because I was getting like a request a day, like, right. hey, can I come on? And so someone had said to me, just kind of spitball, I was like, well, why don't you charge people to come on? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, maybe. Gosh, I don't know. I'm kind of uncomfortable with that. But maybe. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I guess. And then you were literally the very next person to message me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, great. That'll be 200 bucks. And I felt, you know, and I, it looked, I, I feel bad just because it's preve- it prevented me from talking to you. Sure. Um, you're someone that I wanted to connect with. And, um, that's really, you know, that, that I think ultimately isn't a, um, you know, where I was going to go with this anyways. Right. So well, how did it go? Did you, did anybody pay to get on the show? Yeah. You know, okay. So what happened was that th- thanks for asking the question. So what happened was, um, I turned it into Sacktown talks, which okay. was a political, which it was a political discussion type of deal. And, um, I had this buddy, Scott lay, he, he's a really interesting guy, man. He runs this newsletter. Uh, called the nooner okay comes out at noon right and he it's like by the capital for capital folks like deep political insider type of stuff and he he sells ads right this guy is like a genius man uh everything political he knows it like like the back of his hand so we started doing california politics only and um we teamed up with a public affairs firm here in town well actually i did He, he had he had quit the podcast for his own reasons but by this point, we'd had like state senators listening, and you know there was uh, we had we interviewed the lieutenant governor, the mayor of San Diego. Um, we even had like people from different like lobbyists saying, "Hey, won't you cover our issue like this, or won't you say, you know, this issue like you know, kind of trying to right. influence us because we had because we had a platform, you know." So um, that was going that went really well. We were and it was really interesting how quickly we could make ourselves known. Mm-hmm in a small market of mm-hmm. the cap, right? So mm-hmm. if you're trying to get yourself known nationally or worldwide, mm-hmm. it's very difficult because sure. the platform is so big or the, the audience is so big. Right. But if you take like a little niche, boxers in Sacramento, jujitsu guys in yeah, Sacramento, yeah. capital, right? right? You can make big waves. Sure. And so that's that's what that's what we did. And I was getting tired of talking to politicians mm-hmm. all day, mm-hmm. frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I just... I had this lady on Hannah Beth Jackson. Mm-hmm. This is when I decided to quit doing it. Hannah Beth Jackson. She's a state senator from Santa Barbara. And my partner at the time was telling me, let me tell you how big of a B Hannah Beth Jackson is. When we were running a campaign against her, we put an ad in the newspaper. And we said, if this lady ever pissed you off, come, you know, if this lady ever pissed you <laughs> off, come uh, volunteer against her. Right. And like a thousand people showed up. Wow. You know. And so, you know, this lady, so, you know, so this lady uh, came for the interview and I think she kind of expected me to like bow down before her or like Mm kind of like not ask her tough questions. Mm -hmm. And I was just making a very modest sum at that point. And I was just like, why am I doing, you know, why am I doing this? My business partner, he has like a public affairs firm. Sure. And he was like, well, we're doing this because all the, all Sacramento is listening. This is great for my public affairs firm. So I was like, you take it, you know, you, you take it. Uh, And he's like, yeah, okay, I think I'll do that. So he, he wrote me a check for, I sold the the social media properties to him. Um, I won't say how much, but it was, it was like about a, it was like about a used car. Okay. You know, 
like a yeah, about a used car. Um, paid or you would say it's paid for the equipment, okay. you know. But uh, from that, I mean, t- I mean, tremendous things have happened. You know, I, I've had um, you know martial arts talks, and then people look up jujitsu in Sacramento. I pop up. There's right. the podcast. Hey, right. you seem like a, you know, uh, as you know, there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of BS or cultish mentality or abuse sure. in the martial arts world. Sure. So um, having uh, front loaded the idea that this is a decent person, that's not, you know, that's right. not going to seek to take advantage of you or right, that knows right, what right. they're talking about um, has led to, you know, prior to the pandemic led to tremendous growth right. uh, in, in the podcast. That's good. And then, um, and then other professional opportunities have just ha- have, uh, have come from it, honestly. Right. So, um, but hey, man, we're here to talk. We're, ta- we're here to talk about you. Yeah. You're, you're, um, you know, I'll tell you what really caught my eye was those those boxing analysis videos that you made. Okay. And um, here, bring this bring this guy right in front of you, like. Right, it's good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but maybe we can start at the beginning. Maybe you can, you can talk to us just a little bit about your boxing career, yeah. how you got into it. Yeah. Um, at one point, you were uh, you, had a, you were on a 17 fight professional winning streak. You were the top ranked amateur boxer in yeah. 2004. Yeah. Winner of the Golden Gloves. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, trying out for the Olympic team. Mm-hmm. And then transitioning into into entrepreneurship, you got a wonderful location over at 600 Broadway. Yeah, um, big location. Uh, yeah, I mean we expanded, so we were at yeah. 2500, uh, and then we expanded just recently. Yeah, right when the pandemic hit, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Uh, so we're at 41 4100 square feet. I think where we're at now, I think is a good uh, size for what we want to do and yeah. the programs that we run out of the gym. So okay, absolutely, very cool, very cool. Yeah. Do you want to start with like your kind of your boxing first? Do you want to start with like uh, the gym and, and what yeah. you're doing? No, what, I mean, well, um, as an amateur, you know, when I started, I got into boxing. Um, you know, we're going on almost almost twenty years ago. So it's when I first walked into uh, Capital Boxing Gym on Stockton Boulevard in the South Area of Sacramento. Okay, um, I started boxing there. Some people say I started late at 18. Uh, I feel like I started right on time. Uh, so I started boxing at 18. And, you know, I, I quickly became obsessed with it. I went in there with the, um, not necessarily boxing professionally, but being extremely competitive, competing at a high level mm-hmm. as an amateur. I didn't know what that was when I first started, but I knew I was going to be competing at a high level. I felt like I was capable of doing it. So um, after you knew it was going to go somewhere. Yeah, I knew it was going to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I knew um, I I knew how to fight. Uh, I knew that. And then um, I knew I was athletic uh, and I didn't really discover uh, the work ethic, the dedication and the sacrifice really until I started boxing and really got into it. Because as I got into it, I became obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. Um, I trained every day. Uh, you know, I ate the same thing for years, every single morning, five years. I got up and I ran every single day for, for years. Same regimen. I After, you know, as soon as it, it developed, it was, I kept the same regimen um, the whole entire time during my amateur boxing career. I didn't go out. I didn't party. Uh, what did you eat in the morning? I trained. So it was oatmeal and egg whites. That's it. For, for years. That's it. That's it. And I didn't add. And eventually... I stopped adding things to my oatmeal, so it was just plain oatmeal. I didn't have any. I didn't have <laughs> the any. oatmeal got drier yeah. and drier I over time. I didn't add milk. I didn't add fruit. I didn't yeah. add anything. It was just straight plain oatmeal and egg whites, yeah. um, and that's all I ate for years. Um, running every day, and like I said, I became obsessed with it. So when I wasn't training, I was watching film. I had VHSs on Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard. I, I one way whether it's through my coach or um, other coaches, I obtained. This was before YouTube was really yeah. big into the, you know, to the, you could watch old school fights on there. So I had VHSs of all the old school fighters. Uh, you know, I watched film, you know, at least four or five hours a day. Um, yeah, and I just completely, completely obsessed with it. So after a year of starting comp- competing, uh, you know, I was number one in the country at light heavyweight. I was on the USA national team. So things kind of took off quick for me. Mm-hmm. And I credit that a lot to the dedication and the sacrifice that I put in early on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, uh, that, that, I mean, if I just uh, as a quick aside, I, I, I think that's interesting. You said um, you could tell right away it was going to go somewhere for you, and I think maybe for some people, man, there is that there is that um, discovery that happens maybe six months in, three months in, where and I I, I see this as a coach where like some people are like, yeah, I'm gonna this is gonna be a hobby. Yeah, I'm gonna get good at this over time, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's some people that are just destined to never be that good. Frank, yeah, you know, right. just genetics. It's right. a, you know, uh, you Absolutely. know, God distributes his gifts unequally. Right. 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 You know, maybe they're smarter than us. Right. Or they're, they're they're making much more money as a programmer right. or something. Right. You right. Know? Right. Right. Um, but then you you do get those um, 
those folks every once in a while. We're like, ah, oh, this kid can go somewhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I also thought it was interesting that you said um, just kind of sticking to that routine. Yeah. And uh, how rare that is nowadays and how unique that is. Uh, maybe because I'm running more of a hobbyist type of gym and I, I see, you know, you're like, uh, you know, flawless boxing has a lot of programs for like entry level folks. So you're not going to expect the same thing. Yeah. Right. But um, I, I think, you know, much of the the world, um, I don't know, the millennials are just like people feel like they want to get the, all these different experiences. I want to do a little bit of this. Sure. I want to dabble on that. Yeah. I want to do this. I want to travel the world. Yeah. And so, you know, people kind of like sign up, they get the, they buy the gi. Like, yeah, I'm going to do this for six months until whatever the next thing is, right, you know? Right, right, right. And that's kind of no way to go about it, yeah. you know, in terms of, like, in terms of um, um, really getting something out of it, you know? I'll, I'll give you an, another example. In, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, they say people quit right after they obtain their first belt, okay. uh, the blue belt. And yeah. I can tell you, in, in my personal experience, it's very true. I In this last year, I gave out, like, seven blue belts, and, like, right. five, five of them quit. Right. Like, I was like, man, that's right when it was starting to get good. Right. Why do you, you think know? that is? They just want to go on and do something else. You know, or? I literally had one person tell me, now that I've got a blue belt, I'm pretty sure I can defend myself in the streets. Oh, this guy was it. this tall, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. like 120 pounds. I was like, I don't know, man. If you can't take them down and they've got even a right hand, right. you're probably not able to defend yourself. You're, right. so, you know, but then also I worry that there is like an Instagramification of the martial of arts. Of course, of course. And so people are like, I got my blue belt, I'm in the yeah. game, I'm somebody. Yeah. And then they like change their like Instagram name to whatever, <laughs> like slash jujitsu killer. Right, right. And then, but they've, they've been at it for a year or whatever. And then yeah. that's it. That's it. They got yeah. what the, you know, they got yeah. out of it what right. they were hoping to get out. You know, right. they know they're not going to be, they know they're not going to be, uh, sure. you know, uh, 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 a martial artist yeah. among martial artists, right? Yeah. I'll tell you uh, one other thing that I think this this is maybe kind of delicate, but um, I, I'm going to go there. I you mean in my last gym, Alpha Male? Okay. You know we have there's a number of folks in particular. I think I feel like kind of part of what they sold mm -hmm. was like, hey, after practice we're going to line up and you can like take a picture with one of these professional fighters and say that you train with them, mm -hmm. and everyone will think you're a bad, M, you know, Emirat, you know, sure. Uh, everyone, everyone will think you're a bad guy, and I think that there we had this like. Um, um, we had this like a uh, lesbian, you know, I don't know what this is just what she was, but she, you know, oftentimes they try to like, um, adopt like really masculine qualities mm -hmm. because, you know, and I get it. It's, it's, it's a difficult situation. It's not necessarily a welcoming society for, mm -hmm. for people that are not heterodox. So I understand that you're, you know, maybe you're, there's some, you know, exploring and you're trying to figure out what it is, you know, but she was like over the top, like trying to adopt these like masculine qualities to mm -hmm. like, you know, I guess prove her new identity or, you know, try, you know, part of that exploration process of where do I fit in in this sure. crazy world. And, but it was just always like after practice, hey, let me grab one of these pro fighters and, uh, you know, I'm over here training with the killers. Yeah. But that's really what it's about for mm -hmm. them, you know, and, and it's, I, I just keep going back and forth. Like, I mean, I guess that's good because you do want people to promote your business. Sure. But you also are like, man, that's not, that's not how I was raised in the right. martial art. You know what I mean? So not, I, I just wanted to relate that to you because I, I just find that, um, I, I just find like it's so different now than yeah. how it used to well, be. I right? mean, we're practitioners, right? So I don't think we can expect like yeah. as coaches and, you know, gym owners, we can't expect everybody to come in. I don't expect everybody to come to the gym and want to be Sugar Ray Leonard. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, they want to come in. Everybody has their own goals. Uh, and we kind of said we kind of figure that out you know, from the first week of them being in the gyms, like, what are your goals? Some people want to come in, they want to have that one amateur fight. Some guys yeah. just want to lose weight. Some, you know, so everybody's there for a different, different reason. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really what it is. I mean, I know it's, 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 we're not trying to, we're not expecting everybody. To be yeah. There. Everybody to want to, you know, go try to chase a world title. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just not, it's not realistic. People use it for different reasons. And, Martial arts has become, I guess, more commercial now that people, and it, it's just a great, it's a great uh, fitness regimen anyway. So yeah. jiu-jitsu, uh, boxing, kickboxing, whatever, whatever you like, it's a way for you to get in shape, feel healthy and feel good about yourself, build your confidence. Um, so, you know, everybody's in it for different reasons, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just quickly relate just to, just to close up this yeah. topic. Like, yeah. okay, I had this guy. I was just relating to my wife and I was like, man, I got this student. He comes in like once a month, pays his bill on time and. 
you know, and I, I you know, and that's it. Right. And but I kind of I'm like, oh, why doesn't he want to get better? Yeah. And my wife was like, yeah. be thankful for him, man. Like yeah. that's like mathematically, you need a certain amount of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, so you, you know, I, I, this is, I guess, what I'm expressing here: some of my own malaise and yeah. trying, trying yeah, to be no, thankful for, for yeah. the basket of students that I have. Right. So okay, so you're so you're an amateur fighter. You're starting to realize you're gonna go somewhere with this. Yeah. And so what's the next step in your development? When you, when do you start? How long were you training before you started competing? Was uh, that about a year in? Yeah, almost. I think a year is good looking back at it. But um, I, I think it was about six months, maybe six to eight months uh, yeah. before I had my first fight. And then, you know, it's pretty much off to the races. After that, we were fighting every weekend, traveling all over the region uh, oh, to wow. compete. And then, you know, you start going to national tournaments. And that's really when you start getting the experience. Right, give me a second. Let me let me get this. Let me get this toy out of this dog's mouth. Yeah, and go ahead. Sorry. You start um, getting the experience. You're, you know, you're getting a little recognition in the amateur ranks when you start to get to the nationals and people see you compete. And uh, that's really where it took off uh, when I went to the USA national tournament. After that, became a member of the USA national team, and then from there, you're uh, doing international competition. So you're getting able to travel around the world. Uh, you're doing camps at the uh, at in Colorado at the uh, the Olympic Center. Um, so yeah, and then you're just kind of building your resume fighting, staying active, uh, and then, you you know, the end goal as an amateur is the Olympics, so you want to go to the Olympics, okay. um, so that was in, in the plan, and then we kind of, you know, I, we, we switched, we kind of made a change, getting closer, different reasons, ended up turning pro one year before the Olympic year, okay. and then, so then I started my pro career, you know, a uh, few different reasons, the way the landscape of boxing was in Sacramento was one, um, I had, I had kids, you know, I had a family, so I started yes, providing, go, go pro, yeah. make some money, you know what I mean? So different reasons looking back, um, you know, so then I started my pro career and what would that, what would that, um, what would that Olympic title have done for you anyways? You know, you know, uh, an Olympic, I guess I that's mean, a question you're asking yourself. Yeah, right? yeah. No, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't look back at it. You know what yeah. I mean? everybody has their own path your path is your okay. path you know what i mean i could have went to the olympics i could have got a, a career ending injury you know what i mean so yeah. who, who knows you know what i mean so i don't i don't look back and i said should have done this should have done this um the olympic is the pinnacle of amateur boxing so going there winning a gold medal sure it sets you up it's like coming out of you know getting your your, your master's degree phd yeah you but know no what money. I mean? so all right and you but, got the student debt and then you know you go you go from there so um yeah, so again, a gold medal, being an Olympian is always going to help you from transitioning from amateur to pro. I yeah. didn't, uh, you know, I in my pro career was probably more challenging because of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so then I started my pro career uh, and unsigned. So you're unsigned as a, as an as a, as an amateur. It doesn't matter what you did if if you're not, you know, an Olympic medal or Olympic Olympian. It's it's challenging from transitioning from amateur to pro unless you have you know you're not you're unsigned. So I started out there, started fighting locally in the re, in uh, Sacramento, mm -hmm. uh, Red Lion, you know all the local the local yeah. spots in front of five hundred. Red Lion over on Truxell or whatever. Yeah, um, it's not it's gone now. The one okay. that was, used to be with uh art, art right by the Arden Mall. Okay. Yeah. So okay, yeah. A, I think it was a Red Lion there. Okay. They demolished it now, uh, but I started fighting there. Five hundred people pro debut. Um, I don't know, fifteen hundred, two thousand bucks, I think. Yeah. Um, and then I just started there, staying, staying, fighting for the local promoter, fight for the local promoter. Um, I think I had uh maybe like five, six fights locally. Um, and then you know a lot of changes started happening in my career with trainer changing, uh, management issues. Like I, I've been through everything that you could possibly go through as a professional mm -hmm. and you know and that served me well when i transitioned to coaching and you know handling being responsible for fighters careers and 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 trying to guide them and advise them because i've been through all the everything the managerial the promotional uh inactivity trainer changes i've been through all of these things right, right. and you know so a lot of things when i started having success was really towards the tail end of my career you know what i mean when i was mm -hmm. getting you know, when I was in that, you know, that five year, you know, three, five year period say, OK, what am I going to get into towards the end of my career that's going to transition after right, fighting? next? Right. So um, that's really when I started fighting, you know, on TV, ESPN, uh, Telefuturo, uh, HBO, Showtime. That's when things really started taking off for me. So all that experience, um, you know, helped it helps me now. And the fighters say, hey, guys, you got to be on your social media. You got to be doing this. You got it. So I really stress it to these guys because just like in in school, 
you know, your college, your college career really starts your first year of high school, right? right? So you're already laying the foundation to set up when going, getting ready for college. I didn't know that in high school either, right? <laughs> I do. I know now. So with my kids and, you know, we're able to start setting them up, you know, freshman year, this is where it starts. We're already looking what colleges you're going to, things like that. We've already done the process with our older son. You know, he's a, uh, he got a full ride, full ride to Redlands University. He's a sophomore. You know, oh, wow. he's doing well. Uh, and we're starting that process with my daughter now, but now I know I have the experience, so right. I'm able to pass that on. And, you know, I, you know, I had a lot of stumbling blocks in my career, you know what I mean? And yeah. I really had to, I'm like that, that guy in the, in the video game where you start out with, you know, nothing, you know, you, and then you build yeah. your way up. <laughs> you build your character. And you, yeah, exactly. And then you eventually, you know, you, I ended my career fighting in front of 80,000 people, you know, on the other side of the pond and, and Wembley stadium, you know what I mean? Very so. Cool. From there, it was just a lot of a lot of hardships, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of traveling, leaving the family. Right. Uh, you know, um, just different, different, different pl placing myself in different environments to really climb and and gather those resources and that experience to really reach that level. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. So it was a, it was a long, tough journey. Put a lot of stress on myself, my family, and you know what we came out of it. We came out together. We came out stronger, and now. I use all those resources, the experience, and I try to give it back to our youth. I try to, I put it into the programming for our gym, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I, I, I know all the intangibles that, that, that boxing not only provides, but I also know what it takes to be successful. And those same intangibles that I learned in boxing, I apply everything in life. I apply to business. I apply creating relationships. I apply to networking. Right, and so right. I try to give those to not only just the fighters, but also the members of our gym as well to to let them know that these things are going to help you outside of the gym, not just in boxing inside the ring, but at your job, at your school yeah. or any goals that you're pursuing. So it's, it's, that's that's really what boxing has taught me. Yeah, it's 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 really it's wild, like how much it can do for, you know, uh, how much that discipline can do for you yeah. in, uh, in your personal development. Um Miyamoto Musashi, you know, Book of Five Rings. Yeah. Yeah. He said, uh, once you know the way. Once you know the way individually, you know the way broadly. Right, you know, right, once you know right. the way in, in any type of discipline, right. you can see it broadly right. in other things, you know. Right. And um, I mean, that's the same thing with like wrestlers. You know, they just take that championship mentality and they just take, Absolutely. they just take and they say, you know, all right, as hard as I worked at wrestling, I'm going to work at real estate yeah. or whatever the next yeah. hustle is, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, um, it, I really think that's what like 99% of people are going to get out of it, you yeah. know, aside from like the very clear, health benefits sure but i really think that's what what most people are going to get out of it is right. like you know what i didn't think that i could be a person that could spar six rounds right i didn't right. think i could spar six i just never right. in my wildest dreams sure and then what do you know i i increased my work capacity right but i also increased my efficiency right my coach believed in me right i found some courage yeah and it took me about three years yeah. but i got there yeah and and that you was know? one of the biggest things that shocked me and really why we started um training adults I already knew the benefits it was going to do with kids. Like I've seen kids gain confidence, uh, you know, besides the mental part of it, right? I've seen it in kids. But when I started to see it more in adults, that's when I was like, oh, okay, we got something here. We can we can open this program for adults because originally we just focused on youth. The whole idea okay. before the gym even existed was strictly youth. Um, we have a, uh, I have a nonprofit. It's called Flawless for Youth. So we established that. Man, 2000, I want to say maybe 11, 2000, maybe 2010. This was towards the end of my career. Say, okay, we're going to, um, we're going to have, uh, eventually we wanted a gym, but we're going to do programs for, you know, at risk youth, uh, teach them life skills through, uh, yeah. through boxing, fitness and nutrition. And that was the original plan. Of maybe it. like at the boys and girls club. or Yeah. Whatever, you know, like so what ended up happening was, um, we, uh, we had a, there was a gym 19th and T. It's called Fitness Rehab. Okay. Uh, San Sandra Augustine, big shout out to her. She was uh, she had a gym there where she was doing all kinds of different. She was doing yoga. Uh, hey, you tell the story. I'm gonna get you some okay. water. She was doing um, uh, CrossFit, all different types of functional training at her gym, and she had space in her yoga studio where um, she 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 had extra room. So she offered me. She said, "Hey." Uh, would you be interested in in um, training some some people doing doing one on one boxing training? I have the room for it, 
and it was enough room inside of the gym. So I was like, well, we can, we can, um, we work something out. Well, no, I said, well, instead of doing one-on-one training, we can create a situation to where we can do group training like you do with the, yeah. um, with my, my gym. Yeah. With, with your gym. She was super open to it. She said, yeah, sure. And so basically we would, uh, have a boxing program in this little studio. Um, and she was, it was a yoga studio. So she had TRX. She was doing a special kind of yoga. Okay. With TRX straps. And, um, so we had the, the vacant space. We said, uh, it was open. We, yeah, it was open. So yeah, I said, we could hang some bags up. Uh, and we can we can train we can do group training here. We can have like a little sub lease sub sub space situation. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, that's cool. You can do it. Just uh, let my uh, members come to your gym too. I said, no problem. So we started rolling like that. Her people had an extra option right. of a different way of fitness, so they would come over. And then we started building our own clientele there. I think uh, we spent like a thousand, two thousand bucks. Bought bought some heavy bags. She let us hang them on the other side of the of the rig. So, and we were rocking and rolling. We had eight bags, got some boxing equipment, some hand wraps, and then we just started building our clientele that way. Yeah. Started building, building, building. And um, time went on, you know, started getting bigger. We had our own people coming. She had her people coming from the gym. So the situation, everything was working out. So they went to the, the owner um, was selling that building. She was going to sell mm. it. So uh, there was a bunch of different um fitness business businesses in there. And Popping I think the up, idea yeah. was just to have like a co-op, you know, you can go here, do training with Sandra. You can go next door, do, uh, I think there's strength training next door. And so you had all these different things and we were going to try to combine them, try to do like the whole facility was just a, a place where you can do different types of fitness. And so that all got, uh, you know, broken up when the, the lady was like, okay, I'm going to sell the building. Mm. You know, everybody was going to have to go their own separate ways. So, well, nineteenth and T, that's like um, right on the other side of the tracks of Step One. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we are right there. Good location, right in the neighborhood. They built a, you know, all those apartments right next door. Yeah. We were leaving as that was, you know, they were building those. So she goes and finds her own spot. She, uh, she's over there on uh, D Street now, North D. Okay. Um, and then we found the six hundred Broadway location. So originally it was uh, twenty five hundred square feet. Uh, again, we took all the equipment that we had loaded up in there. It was a bunch of hand-me-down equipment, some, some, some hand-me-down mats, nothing, nothing new. We hadn't, we hadn't had anything new for years in there. We set up shop, uh, you know, started there. I think we were there for, uh, almost four years. Um, and we built our clientele up there enough, enough, enough. When I had first moved in the building, the, we were in suite B, there was suite D, which was vacant. It's an old office, a bunch of stuff there. Um, and I and I talked to the owners and said, hey, uh, after we were in, in Suite B for a year, I said, what do you guys think about me eventually expanding into this location? You know, they, they didn't really take it too seriously. They're like, oh, um, you know, we have offices in there. You have a gym. We don't really, you know, we, don't, we just built a built a bunch of office space in there. So it's cubicles, yeah, office doors. Yeah, we don't tear that down. We don't, yeah, we don't, want, we don't want to do any of that. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't an option. I said, okay. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm eventually going to be in that, in that building, yeah. you know, just give it time. So we, you know, time went on, um, it, uh, the building was vacant. I think they, you know, they had a couple of tenants come in within the time. Uh, but eventually, um, we, we, you know, we were ready to, to make that move. The building was still vacant. So it was like, we made the transition. Boom. Uh, so now we're, you know, we, we got new equipment, new boxing ring, everything new now, new flooring. Yeah. Um, no, everything, no, yeah. Very... We, we 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 got some newer items in the old gym that we took over there. Yeah. But for the most part, the new one is forty one hundred square feet. Uh, new bags, boxing gym, flooring, everything. Uh, we have a uh, weight equipment set up as well. Uh, but you know, we and we you know we designed it. We set it up to how how we wanted it to. So uh, that's where we are now. As soon as we made that move, bam pandemic comes in so now yeah. it's like we can't we can't have a grand opening there's no celebration of the new gym we can't have anybody in there so uh you know we started dealing with that moved everything outdoor you know the whole you know everything you had to do when transit the gyms had to comply with the with the stay at home the order stay-at-home and the, order, yeah you know so um that's kind of where we're at now you know we we closed down they let us open back up closed us back down so you know now it's the same again we bring it back to the intangibles that I learned in boxing, ad- mm-hmm. ad- you know, adapting, you know, adapting to your situation, to your environment. And that's kind of like where we're at now. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. you know, doing the outdoor training, doing the virtual training 
and, uh, you know, just trying to maintain. So typically this is a time when gyms thrive, right? New year, new me. Right. People want to come in, try something right. We're new. We're missing or, all that. Yeah, we don't, we don't. And we also missed it back in the spring when, you know, right. the other pandemic and they wanted us closed down. So typically we thrive during those months. And then, you know, every, you know, the holidays come around, people go on vacation, traveling. Right. So, you know, you kind of mild out during that time. And then it re-ups again for the new year. Yeah. And then, you know, you got eight months, you know, you know, seven, eight months of, you know, people coming in and coming, coming into and the gym. So definitely had to adapt. And, you know, we were talking about the um, we were talking about the digital, you know, the, the online tutorials and stuff. Yeah. And that's really when I saw the, you know, that that really transitioned into doing a lot of online content, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the virtual train, not only the virtual training, but we also have an on demand platform to where you have pre-recorded and you can work out any time, you know, at your own at your yeah, own at time, your own pace. as long as you have Wi-Fi. And then the tutorials The tutorials have really, uh you know, get, you know, expanded the flawless boxing brand, you know, internationally, you know, so now, you know, I'm able to have conversations with people all over the world, just from from those tutorials, rather be through Instagram, Facebook, you know, YouTube. Okay, and we're back. So before before we before we got disconnected, and you know, what, I got a redundancy recording here. So we can, yeah. even even if this fails, we can record audio only. So I think we're in a good we're in a good place here. Um, before we before we we got forced off with our technical difficulties, we we're just talking about the kind of like the difficulty and the hardness of that path. Yeah, when you're unsigned, right? You sure. Know, the um, the promoters kind of act like I'm going to say like almost like political agents, and where they lobby like the or they lobby like the venues, or they they lobby like the appropriate people to make yeah. sure that their boy yeah gets the right fights, right? And you don't you don't have someone looking out for you when you're unsigned right. like that. And that's yeah. an exceptionally difficult path. Well, it's 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 different levels, man. You know, when you're talking about a local promoter, especially in California, man, a lot of these promoters are just trying to survive like everybody else. Just like you everybody know what else. I mean? yeah. So the 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 got the local guys are, you know, they're trying to fill seats. It's all about filling seats. So they're gonna get guys within the region to where they don't have to pay fly guys in to pay for travel. Mm. And then hopefully those people will bring enough people to fill their, you know, in my case, a 500 seat venue. So, you know, like I said, they're just, they're just trying to survive, you know, golden boy, when you talk about golden boy, top rank guys at a higher level, different story, right? Yeah, sure. They have a guy who they have signed, who they're trying to build up and eventually make some money off of. So well, yeah, when you go back to fighting guys in the region and you're talking about, how did you describe him as, um, you know, uh, how do how did you describe them again? Oh, I just said they're used to eating dirt yeah, and yeah. they kind of so, you, you know fight. I mean, in some cases, literally fighting for the livelihood of their right. family. Right. So, so yeah. So that's I wasn't I wasn't that guy eating dirt, but yeah. I had that mentality. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. So I was going in there, and and rightfully so. At the beginning of your career, you should be you should be stopping guys. You know what I mean. Mm. Uh, and that's and that's the path that you know I was taking. Early on, you're stopping guys, and then you know if you're a high level amateur. The guys you're competing with may not be high level amateurs. That they may have similar records, but the pedigree is is different. different and then that, that should show in as a professional. And again, a local promoter is going to put you on his show, and he doesn't want you to lose because he wants you to come back and fight on the next one. And hopefully, you can bring those same hundred, hundred fifty, however many people you bring to his next show. So mm -hmm. you know, so there is a um, a sense of security on both ends for you as well as the promoter. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but you know, once you get to, you know, I say 10 fights, you know, a lot of guys, you can get a lot, I could probably get you to 10 and 0 if you want to yeah. become a professional boxer, but you know, when you get to 10 and 0, then you, you know, you're talking about more rounds, talking about stiffer competition. Um, and then, you know, things kind of switch up after that. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Like boxing has that, that culture where like you really have to keep the record very clean. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like in, um, in jujitsu. I can tell a lot of jujitsu is like the same guys fighting each other sure. over and over again, yeah. and they kind of trade wins and losses. Right. Um, I think same with kickboxing. The kickboxing world is so much smaller. Right. These guys fight each other over and over again. Right. Um, and then in mixed martial arts, it's kind of, I mean, with the exception of with the exception of Khabib, it's pretty much assumed that you're yeah. going to take a loss. Boxing follows is going to follow the trend of the best fighter. Mm -hmm. who's considered the best fighter, right? So. Let's go back to Muhammad Ali, right? Right. So there's the joke, you know, that old timers talk about. Muhammad Ali has the most knockouts in um, heavyweight boxing, right? Mm -hmm. That's not true. It's not the case. But the reason why they say that is because all the heavyweights try to emulate how Muhammad Ali fought, fought 
and well, they got funny. knocked out trying to do that, <laughs> pulling straight back, fighting with their hands down. So yeah. you looked at it in a non-social media era. So people were guys were trying to fight like Muhammad Ali because he was the best fighter. He was the most recognized fighter at the time. You can fast forward through time. You can go through people with the Roy Jones face. Mm -hmm. um, and now with social media, we'll just fast forward to Floyd. You can see everything that he does, his preparation, his lifestyle, um, the way he, you know, his and his competition. You have access to all that through social media. So now you look at the mitt work. Floyd completely revolutionized the way everybody in combat sports does mitt work, not just boxing. Well, expand on with that. The, with, the, um, with the choreography mitts, you know, high volume combinations. And so he started doing that for during the 24 7, right? So that's mm -hmm. how we were first able to see. So it was always more that. like one, one, yeah, two. So that's, yeah. So know? that's, it was more traditionally that way, right? Wow. But, you know, I, like I said, Floyd is probably the most influential fighter in all of combat sports just for that one of those reasons, right? Not only in boxing. Do you think boxing, that's helpful? I think it has a place. Yeah. I think it has a place. But I don't think when you're talking about developing a fighter, especially a fighter from scratch, I don't think, you know, you want I, – I think coordination, conditioning, I think it right. can definitely play a place. I wouldn't – you don't have to completely omit, omit it out of your training regimen, but – um yeah, when you talk about developing a fighter, but the problem is you have guys developing fighters using that type of technique. Right. 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 And so know, they think it's maybe more of a training tool and less of a showmanship. Like they, they right, lost right. the, and, the, and, the and, idea and, of what and, it's actually and, for. And that's where we have to dissect what, you know, what made Troy, uh, Floyd successful was, you know, his his, his showmanship that, mm -hmm. you know, what he what he what he advertises. Right. So mm -hmm. even if that's not necessarily how Floyd prepares for a fight. That's what we have access to see. So we're going to think that that's just, this is how the best fighter in the world prepares for a fight. So now you have coaches, you have fighters that want to mimic that. And again, take it back to fighters trying to fight like Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. pulling their hands back. It doesn't work out well. So you guys, you've seen guys try to emulate Floyd's style. It doesn't, you know, in some cases it doesn't work out well. So boxing will follow the trend of what we have. Uh, we have pound for pound, right? So. Right the pound for pound best fighter in the world. And at the time, for a long time, Floyd was, you know, he was recognized as that. So a lot of people took took parts of his training that we have access to through 24-7, Showtime All Access, whatever Floyd was doing, a lot of guys, and not only fighters, but coaches as well, try to emulate. Mm -hmm. So they take that and they pass it down to their students. You, you know, and I, I think it's super interesting. Not, not to stop you right there. Sorry, but um, I just wanted to kind of touch on this a little bit. Um, the difference in the promotional model between boxing and uh, mixed martial arts. Sure. Um, I just I just think you'd have a, a, a good mind for, for this. Um, in boxing, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe this has been my take on it. I think boxing has, um, like every time something happens in the boxing world, mm -hmm. it's like a fire sale. Like we're going to get every last penny out of this Logan Paul fight. We're going to get every last penny out of this, the next you know, Gervonta Davis, we're going to get, you know, but it's, um, it's missing institution building. It's missing like brand building within those promotions the way, like, you know, if the UFC comes to town, of course, they're going to try and put the California kid on. They're going to put on like right. the Sacramento guys, sure. you know, that's kind of fan service locally. But I, I think people are still going to come because it's the UFC, right? right? They, right, they, right but right. they really, man, they front loaded that investment. Sure. They front loaded that effort and they, they kind of built a circus. Like yeah. the circus is coming to town. Yeah. Whereas boxing seems more, uh, we got the golden, you know, yeah. Oscar De La Hoya is yeah. coming, right? Yeah. Um, but it seems more, maybe more difficult to build institutions on kind of, um, you know, sandcastles almost made to crumble, right? Like you're just kind of surfing from star to star. Yeah. Well, you, you know, comment on that or, um, you know, the UFC kind of almost has a monopoly on mixed martial arts, right? Yeah. So you have yeah. other, you know, I'm again, I'm a, I'm a specialist in boxing. I'm a I'm a casual UFC fan, right? So yeah. I'm a casual MMA fan. I watch, you know, the local guys that fight when they're on the cards and things like that. Uh, John Jones or, the, yeah. you know, the bigger guys. I'm a casual UFC fan. So I'm not in it like uh, like I am in boxing, right? But you have, you know, when you think MMA, you know, guys don't train MMA. They train UFC, right? So yeah. it's it's like the Q-tip, right? It's Q-tip. It's a, it's a cotton swab or whatever. But, you know, we recognize it as a Q-tip or, or a saran wrap, right? So UFC has a stronghold on mixed martial arts, right? Would you mm. agree with that? Oh, yeah. With boxing. Without a doubt. You have a lot of different factions that are competing for, I don't know if you want to say competing, but 
they're 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 trying to be you know the number one right so you have top rank you have golden boy you have a lot of powerful mm -hmm. uh promotional companies in boxing and then so it makes it more of a, a free market right so if yeah. i'm a kid certainly better for the fighters yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. and you know that's why i think traditionally they say boxers you know top level boxers make more than you know the ufc fighters i think yeah. i think it's getting more competitive and they're closing the gap but boxing has been around a lot longer you know mm -hmm. what i mean boxing has mm -hmm. been around for a hundred hundreds of years right so you go back, you know, um, you know, you know, when the mob had the, yeah, I'm had watching, the, I'm watching the show right now, uh, boardwalk. I'm watching the show right now, boardwalk empire. Yeah. And have you watched it? Yeah. It's yeah, phenomenal, yeah, yeah, man. But scene. you know, they had, the, they had that, like, uh, that subplot where like Jack Dempsey's working out on the boardwalk. Right. Right. And I mean that, that happened over a hundred years ago, right, you know, right. and so, then he was yeah. going to eventually, I think he went on to fight Jack Johnson and, and, uh, if that's maybe I'm wrong. But, um, you know, I mean, that, that's been around for at least 150 years. So, yeah. obviously, the, yeah. the financial is going to be Jack more robust. Jack Dempsey was post uh, Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson, yeah. Okay. I don't think they, uh, they fought each other. Okay. I could be wrong, but I'm almost sure they didn't fight each other. But uh, right. I'll say you know your boxing history. Yeah, well, I, I, I go back, but I, don't, I, I, I dabble in that era, you know, the Great Depression era. You okay. know, Jack Johnson, of course, 1905, I think, heavyweight okay. champion. Then I think Jim Dempsey came on a little bit later. Uh but uh, yeah, so you, what are we talking about? We, oh, the, you know, you just have the the fighters have more of an option, right? So if I'm an Olympian coming out of the amateurs, you mm -hmm. know, all you know, it's you're it's, being courted. It's a by bidding different, war, right? Yeah. So, so I, I could talk to this promoter over here. This promoter's offering me this. And you kind of UFC. Everybody's trying to get to the UFC. You know what I mean? Like all yeah. the MMA fighters. I think that's the that's the World Series of MMA is uh, competing in the UFC. So you know, it breaks my heart. I watch some of these some of these guys in the UFC. And um, you look them up on Instagram, 11,000 followers or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really wild when you kind of step back and have an appreciation for what these different platforms right. can do for you. Right. I, um, I follow like a portfolio of folks that are in the WWE, like uh, NXT leagues. Okay. NXT is, um, it's like their minor leagues. The minimum, like the minimum threshold of Instagram followers for like minor leagues in the WWE, it's like half a million. Yeah, yeah. Like that platform is just so, yeah. but you know, it's because yeah. it had all those TV contracts. Right. It's just wild, you know, and even now people are getting away from TV, but they still stay engaged, yeah. right? And obviously the, you know, the the nature of that platform is they're going to make their star shine and they're right. going to make their, they're going to make their bad guys be really bad. So obviously they're going to kind of inflame and polarize and yeah. you're going to feel, you know, more of a clear emotion, you know. Right. Um, Sumo, stop that. Sorry. Um, but you know, and then you see some of these some of these uh, UFC fighters, and so, especially some of these local guys. Like, man, you've been killing yourself for ten years. You got eleven thousand, you know, like the. And I'm not sure the UFC really cares about you know, like, necessarily helping every single one of their fighters, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, reach the reach the heights or yeah. transition to their next career. I feel like I'm sure, there's certainly a depth chart, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I always thought that was, that was interesting with fighters. Um, no matter what you do you probably have to have a second career. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't I don't know. I think like again everybody's everybody's path is different, but you just you just never know. You know, fighting is such yeah. you first of all you have a very small window to compete no in. Time. You know, of course it's getting longer due to, you know, nutrition and science, you know, athletes are able to compete in all sports, right? Mm -hmm. You have a very but even more for a fighter, right? We're talking about, you know, taking punishment to the body, to the brain. Uh your window is very small already. You talk about the whole course of your life. So um, what I try to stress to these guys and my fighters is you don't have a lot of uh, you don't have a lot of time for mistakes. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do something, make sure you try to try to get it right and fight the first time and just do a straight shot and try to make the maximize, maximize your ability, maximize your earnings, because at the end of the day, the game is about money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's it's about how much money can you generate in this short span of time? And, you know, like, I, I, you know, I agree. You know, a lot of people don't agree. But with Floyd, he said, you know, legacy doesn't pay bills. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, I think he's 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 living proof of that. Like you want to maximize your earning out of your craft. You're right. So you dedicate that maximize small, earnings, minimize damage. Yeah. And get and, out and, and try to get out. Man. And, and, <clears> and that's really, really the name of the game. That's how the promoters are thinking about it. They're thinking about maximizing their earning right do mm -hmm. do i can't speak for them but are they thinking that i want to be known as the best promoter ever in boxing i'm not sure that's not that was that's what drives them the success 
I think the competition drives yeah. them, but at the end of the day, it's the money, right? Yeah. They you want, know, it's about the money. I, I really, I, I thank you for saying that. I really, I really worry. I think some folks, uh, again, I'm going to go back to MMA, but just some of the folks that I, that I've seen, you know, some, um, getting ready to come up through the ranks. Yeah. Um, and or, or even let me say more broadly, I think this is something that folks can maybe appreciate more. Um, fighters getting the wrong impression of Conor McGregor, you know, with all the antics and stuff, or sure. like taking his trash talk personal, right. or like kind of raising their fit, you know, that he's getting yeah. all the attention. It's like, well, he said it very clearly. He wants to get in, make his money, and get out, you know. But yeah. you know, then you hear you'll hear other fighters say, "No, I fight for honor or whatever." It's yeah. like I don't know what what honor you're in your underwear kicking each other, you know. It, yeah. Like um, if you. I have one buddy in specific says, you know, I want to fight to like honor myself. I you know that's 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 a good that's a very humble notion. That's a sure. that's a good thing. Right. But I think you might have the wrong idea. I mean, then spar in your gym for free. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you know, you know uh, yeah, I mean, everybody's in it for a different reason, whatever yeah. drives them. Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, this is this is this is this is a business. You yeah. know what I mean? You have to you have to look at it like that. Fighters should look at themselves as a business. And, yeah. you know, you go back to, you talk about the UFC, you know, they may not get paid as much, but they have a huge brand behind them. So mm -hmm. a lot of those guys can use that exposure um, that they get and they can really help their business, their advertising uh, themselves and, you know, really expand their network to where they can do other things besides depending on that money for competition. Right. Mm -hmm. Tell the same thing to the boxers. I said, look, you know. Cause I didn't utilize my social media as much as much as when I was fighting. Cause I was like, you know, I was like, you know, we're just gonna, I'm gonna train hard every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna Let worry about any of that. Talking. I'm not gonna do it, yeah. worry about any of that extra stuff. And you know, now I'm playing catch up, right? I'm playing catch mm -hmm. up with my social media um, now. Cause now I'm utilizing, I'm on it every day. But so I tell the guys now, all the fighters that I say, look, you should post something every single day. You know what I mean? said that's hard to do i mean it but it's not it's yeah. not it's like it doesn't matter if it's you know you finish up your training maybe you're uh you're doing 30 seconds of ab work put your cell phone up do 30 seconds of ab work and throw it up there yeah you know what i mean don't don't worry about you know the, the you're you're a fighter right catch yourself in your element deliver that to your audience and and just see what it what it what it attracts you don't you never know so just be consistent as possible and yeah. get something out every single day. It's only going to help your brand, right? So if I'm a business, I got a commercial on TV every single day. It's only going to help my brand, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with fighters. You know, advertise as much as you can, uh, network as much as you can, but you know, dedicate that small that one percent of your day to to train it. You know what I mean? But yeah. at the end of your training, beginning of your training, throw something up there. Uh, you know, for example, we got a kid at the gym, uh, Kevin Montana top amateur, uh, you know, so figuring out where he's going to go with his career, right? It's continuing amateur or pro, but he comes in the gym. He, you know, he works. He's one of the hardest workers, shows up every day, but he'll carve out a little bit of time to shoot him on the double end bag, shoot him on the heavy bag, shoot him shadow boxing, do, and then he'll throw it up on social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's the idea. I'm not saying, you know, make it your life, yeah. make it now. Like I dedicate full time. to so when I go in there and say, okay, I'm going to shoot some tutorials. Right. But take 30, 45 seconds five minutes, put, throw it up, you know, maybe you get four or five videos and you got something to post every day because that's, again, that's marketing for your brand, right? Yeah. I tell all the young fighters that it doesn't matter if you got a hundred followers on Instagram or uh, 10,000, you should have apparel for you as a fighter. That's, that's extra money that you could be getting. That's extra. If it's 200 bucks, 500 bucks a month, whatever it is, you should be. You should have apparel. You know what yeah. I mean. It's just it. It's just it should be automatic. Dude, I gotta tell, man. I um, <laughs> apparel. So these shirts. I um. It, it. I learned so much. You. You learned so many lessons. Yeah. Too. You know. Yeah. Like I um. I would. I would have had one for you, but I sold out of large and extra large. Okay. You know. Um. So keep them for the, yeah. for the next run. We'll, no we'll we'll exchange a shirt. But um, you know. So for example, one of the things that I learned, you know, in in printing shirts for the gym. Right. No full grown man regardless what his stature will purchase a size small shirt for himself. Hmm. Not one. Okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'll take a medium, fits yeah. him like this. Yeah. It just, no man will, you know, will buy. So all the size smalls I gave to like women and kids. Right. You know, okay. So next time, next time I order, I know it's going to be medium and up, medium, right. large, extra large, two XL. Right. Right. Um, you know, women's cuts are like very difficult because women are very, you know, women care a lot more about like, like the, how the fabric is soft or not soft or how it fits to their body. 
So like once you start selling women's apparel, so in, in yeah. my experience, there's been a lot more. Yeah. Also, jujitsu tends to mostly be men. Right. You know? um, three, the I wanted to minimize the cost per shirt. Also, I have like four colors on this thing. Mm -hmm. So I wanted yeah, to minimize right. the cost for the shirt. Right. So I bought 150 of them. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like two grand. Yeah. That money comes back into your pocket 25 bucks at a time. Mm -hmm. So it's like you like it goes out two grand at a time, but it comes back 25 bucks at a time. Right. So it is functionally gone. Yeah. Unless I was gonna open an escrow account and sure. watch it all trickle in over time, you know, sure it doubled, whatever. Yeah. But it is functionally gone. I every you know every, twice a week I get beer money for it or whatever right, right. The, and this is maybe I'm showing my bad my bad business mind because I should be keeping it in a separate account but sure. I just don't move I just don't move that much, but three. You know I see my buddies around town or my, like my my students around town wear this shirt right. I was like man I think that, like my like look I just saw my buddy walk walk through the farmers market yeah. with it yeah you know like a hundred people saw yeah. it you yeah. know. Yeah, four next time next time I print a shirt you know Isak BJJ is kind of small in here right. and then right. the. The cartoon on the back is, I think, very beautiful, but it's kind of abstract. Right. Maybe it's just going to say Isak BJJ very yeah. clear. You know, so you, you you learn all those lessons. On, yeah. I think it's an invaluable experience. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Um, can we get into some boxing current events? Current yeah. events before, yeah. before yeah, fire away, man. Let's know, do it. Um, the Legends League, the the Mike Tyson, the Roy Jones. Um, I mean, obviously, the fight I think was a little bit um, lackluster. I think Tyson looked great. Yeah. Um, is there a space you think that that is there a space for these old timers to kind of come back in under this legends banner have these shorter rounds you know it was an exit and and then the other question is like what are the rules for the engagement is it going to be an exhibition where they're kind of just going to have some fun and move around or are they really going to fight like wh what would you like to see would you like to see it not at all <laughs> yeah you know i'm I, i'm never going to tell somebody that they can't you know, earn a living. I'm never yeah. going to tell a fighter, you know, that he should, uh, you know, he shouldn't be fighting. Yeah. Um, it's dangerous. You know what I mean? It's dangerous to, to be competing at that age. Like I said, we go back to where, you know, athletes are extending their life, um, you know, their shelf life mm -hmm. due to the nutrition and the science. But um, yeah, man, I, I, I watched it. I enjoyed the Tyson. I enjoyed the Roy Jones fight. I thought it was a great, um, you know, showing for, uh, you know, for Mike Tyson. Yeah. And it sounds like they're going to do more. Um, I have no, pro and that's the thing, like, this is nothing new. Like, people are like, this is the the Logan Paul, the Mike Tyson, this is a freak oh. show. This is nothing new. Um, this is know, like all they do in Japan. Yeah, well, yeah, and then you got to look about when, you know, speaking of Japan, when Muhammad Ali fought the, uh, if you go on YouTube and you, you know, uh, I don't remember the, how to say his name. It was, a, it was a Japanese wrestler. He was famous. Was it a Noki? Yeah, so when he when they fought each other, right? Yeah. Muhammad Ali came in with his boxing gloves. Was, yeah. I don't know what the rules were, but you know, um, you know, Muhammad Ali actually sustained like some some really bad injuries from oh that fight because he kept kicking him in his leg. Like he was laying on the ground the whole fight, and he just it was basically we'll just say it's a it was an MMA fight, right? Yeah. But th these things are nothing new. These special events or freak shows or whatever you want to call them mm -hmm. in boxing. Top rank had uh, Butterbean. He was, uh, you know, yeah. remember the tough man contest, right? Yeah, tough yeah, man yeah. contest. And the guys with no experience would go in there, slug it out, whatever. So he, I think he was, uh, he That's was a actually part of the very tough scary. man contest. They go in and right. play Butterbean. They took Butterbean. He signed him to a promotional contract <laughs> with top rank, and he was king of the four rounders. So these things, it's, 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 it's not new. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nothing new. So the uh, when Floyd fought the guy over there, uh, was he in Japan too? Tension, yeah, uh, tension. I think was his yeah. Name, yeah. So you know these thing, these things. There's, there's, there's nothing new. You know, boxing yeah. has has seen all of these, all of all these, the different variations. Yeah. You yeah. know, so uh, you know, back to the Roy Jones. It was a good fight. I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. Would I watch Tyson, Tyson fight again? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and to, I don't know where they're going to go with it, but when you tell fighters that um, go light or take it easy, in my experience, I've never I've never seen it happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, there's levels, right? So they're always yeah. going to either match the intensity or try to take the intensity to the next level, right, right. and then it just goes until it explodes. That's so, like both, both yeah. they start, it's like a dialogue of mutual escalation. Right, right. right. So uh, I think with, uh, you know, proper matchmaking, and um, I think, you know, you have, you know, you can have good four, six, eight rounds, maybe. I don't know, you know, yeah, but yeah. I, I enjoyed it, man. I, I watched it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, Logan Paul's probably in over his head with Floyd Mayweather. That's okay. He's going to get paid. He's going to represent himself well, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Um, you know, bring his YouTube audience to boxing, right? I mean, I, I really don't think it's a, um, 
you know, if we go back to this to this idea, like this is about making money, guys. Exactly. exactly. You know, everyone all caught up on honor or whatever. It's like, yeah, right. you got the wrong idea here, maybe. You and, know, and, and that's what they. If you're gonna look at, if you're gonna, like I said, if you're gonna look at Floyd, if you're gonna model Floyd, don't model Floyd because of his flashiness, his mm-hmm. cars, his jewelry. Don't model that. Model his business acumen. Model his work ethic. Model his sacrifice and his dedication. You mm-hmm. know what I mean. So you look at it now. He's getting ready to fight Logan Paul make you know god knows how much money he's gonna make but Mm -hmm. he's gonna make a lot of money you know what i mean hundreds of millions you know what i mean hundred million Mm dollars you know what i mean so um yeah so model that you know what i mean so think outside the box you know what i mean it it, like you said legacy don't pay bills man so he's here logan paul's gonna come in who knows what's gonna happen you know what i mean if you look at it now i didn't expect conor mcgregor to last that long but you know some people say floyd carried him some people say he was competitive um who knows, man? Who knows? This is, you yeah. know, I'm not saying it's new territory, but, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But you talk about the best fighter, arguably one of the best fighters in ever versus a guy who just, I think he just got, he got knocked, did he get knocked out his last fight? Connor? Uh, then he, no, uh, Logan Paul. He fought, no, he, he fight he, KSI or? He fought the basketball dude. No, no, no. That was his brother. Jake Paul fought the Jake Oh, man, Paul. I can't even keep them together. Yeah, I can't, I, even, yeah, keep, no, I can't I even keep them I, together. I, I, didn't, I didn't know there was two of them either. But so I, the brother's going to fight. So, yeah, so Jake Paul fought the basketball player, Nate, Nate Robinson, right? Yeah. He knocked him out. So Logan Paul, I think he had a fight, too, against another yeah, he, he did get he knocked out. He fought KSI, right? Yeah, he got knocked out. Yeah, yeah so he, he lost that fight. So now, you know, he's going to take a huge jump in competition and fight the one of the best fighters ever. I mean... This is ridiculous, you know, yeah. You know I mean? But like you said, you know, it's, again... Take take the part of what they're doing, right? They're taking Logan Paul's twenty million uh, YouTube subscribers who probably don't really watch boxing. They know who, right. they probably know who Floyd is, but they don't know any you know anybody else in in the boxing world. But those you know a, per, a fraction or a percentage of them are gonna tune in and buy that pay per view. Mm-hmm. I look at the good uh, good part of it, right? So they're probably gonna have an undercard like they did with this Tyson fight. So that's gonna give you know uh, you know fighters a lot of exposure on that undercard you know what mm-hmm. i mean so you know looking the good of it whatever yeah it almost seems yeah. like the like the like the base of uh, the base that boxing is able to reach is broadening yeah yeah and, and because know? of things like this because of tyson because of you know the youtube guys coming mm-hmm. into it and there's nothing wrong with it i don't i i have, I have, I have no issue with it you know yeah. floyd is he's, he's he's always been uh different you know mm-hmm. he's always um understood you know, expanding his market, right? He went to Dancing with the Stars. He did the wrestling. All those things are, are garnering not only new fans for him, but new fans for the sport right, as well. Right. So I don't, I don't understand why people are, uh, why, why people are against it. It makes no sense to me. I think it's, I think it's smart. I think it's a good move, not only for, for Floyd and Logan and everybody else involved, but just boxing in general, right? It's going to bring more people, more people to the sport. You know yeah. what I mean? What you decide to do with that audience is completely up to you. You take it back it's to like the, now. What's yeah, next? You take it to the back to the fighter as an individual. You know what I mean? What do you do with your audience, and how do you how do you turn that into uh, you know making money or you know watching you fight or whatever? That's that's your decision. But you know Floyd is giving you know the sport that audience along with making you know uh, a ton of money. Sure, so, sure. You know. Hey, so I, let, let me throw some let me throw some some big names at you, and you can just give me some reactions sure. and tell me what you think is next. From uh, Tyson Fury. Um, yeah, is he going to have that third fight? You know, I, I don't know. I, I think that really depends on, um, you know, what Deontay Wilder wants to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I would like to see him fight uh, Anthony Joshua. You know, mm-hmm. I'd like to see him go in that direction. Um, of course, I want to see the third fight with Deontay Wilder. Um, but, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all for seeing, uh, you know, something different. Okay. Okay. Uh, Andy Destroyer. Um, Ramirez. Big Mexican guy. Uh, Ruiz. Ruiz. Yeah, Andy Sorry. Ruiz. Man, I'm yeah. the worst, man. I'm the worst. Um, you know, he kind of came into that last fight. Yeah. Like, really bloated, kind of yeah. kind of big, out, out of condition. He looks like he's skinny again. Um, does he have, like, a resurgence in his career, or is he kind of... I, I think so. I think, you know, you learn a lesson. He obviously did something to get mm-hmm. to that top level. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so he, he understands that. But, again, when you talk about boxing, you got to... Or martial arts in general. Discipline, Right. Right. Discipline this doesn't look like um going to the gym every day, uh, you know, sticking to your nutrition. Discipline comes in a lot of different forms when you talk about martial arts or you talk about boxing, right? It's, you know, staying out of the staying out of the nightlife and, 
you know, staying, not, not doing the women chasing, not doing the booze, not doing, there's so many different things mm-hmm. that come with um, discipline. And, you know, that's a, that's a drug in itself reaching all that success overnight. Right. I don't say overnight, right. but that one fight completely changed his identity. Right. Yeah. Now you're the champ. You're the heavyweight champion of the world. You're the first Mexican heavyweight champion of the world. Right. That comes with so much different responsibilities and distractions that, you know, me and you probably couldn't imagine, right? You right. Know, it's just that being, you know, that people say that the heavyweight champion is the is the biggest um, championship in all of sports, right? So, you know, so he, he fell victim to that. You know what mm. I mean? So he fell victim to that, probably got a little, he wasn't as disciplined as he excited. was as the contender, right? So typical story, right? Guy, yeah. he, the challenger, he, get, he, get, he struggles, he reaches to become a contender, then he's the champion, he becomes, he, you know, he slips up a little bit. So, you know, I think the, the you know, the rematch came in out of shape. Uh, I guess he wasn't training as much as he should have been. You know, so I think that humbled, right? Yeah. So now I yeah. think that you're going to see a resurgence. It looks like, you know, from what I see on social media, he's training hard, he's hungry, he's got the hunger back again. And on top of that, he's talented, right? He's talented. Yeah. He can fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you know, you got you gotta you gotta um, you gotta help hold him in there. How he does against you know those big guys like um, Tyson Fury, maybe a Deontay Just Wilder. Just much bigger in stature. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. It's it's a heavy task, but we thought it was going to be a task against him against Anthony Joshua, and he got it done. So yeah. you know, there's no question that he could possibly do it again. Is there um, you know, the, the, I, I just watched Canelo fight uh, Caleb. Yeah. Is there anybody on your radar, anybody on your radar in the next couple of years that can give Canelo a real challenge? You know, I'd like, I'd like to see it. You know, I think, uh, you know, a friend of mine, Demetrius Andrade, I think um, he can definitely be competitive with, um, with Canelo. I think Canelo has, has developed a lot over the years, Mm. but you know, he's got 45, 50, what, what he's got about 50 fights, right? Yeah. Turned pro when he was 15. He's had a lot of time to develop. You yeah. know what I mean? He's, you know, he wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't thrown in stiff. They, you know, they, they, they carried him. They, yeah. they developed him like you should. And he's had a lot of time and he's gotten a lot better. He's good. I think he's, uh, I think he's on top of his game right now for sure. Got it. But again, there's guys in there that can be competitive. There's with always. Them. Whether they can beat him, that's, you know, that's why we want to see the fights. But throw him in there with the Charlos. Charlo brother, throw him in there with Demetrius Andrade. You know, let's see, let's see the fights. Okay, uh, but he's in a position to where he can pick and choose. He can call the shots, right? Yeah. He's in a he's in a position. Outstanding performance against Callum Smith. Um, I thought he would win the fight. I didn't think he would win in that fashion, but you know, um, like I said, he's completely developed. And I think with Canelo, a lot of people say, well, you know, he's gotten so much better since he fought Floyd. He learned so much from you know going twelve rounds with Floyd. Mother. Yeah, I'm sure he. He uh, he learned a lot from fighting Floyd, absolutely no question. But you're taking credit away from Team Canelo, right? Mm. He's you know they've developed him over the years to where he's to where he's at the this point now. You know I mean you could see you could see it in his fights. You know what I mean he's he's a, he's a lot more confident. His defense has gotten better. His head movement, his awareness, his hand position. He's just he's just a, he's he's just at the top of his game right now. Yeah. So yeah, we 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 should still see him with. Um, they'll find somebody. Yeah. There's always somebody. There's always out somebody there. out there. There's always yeah. somebody. You know, yeah. you stick around long enough, somebody will catch They'll up. Catch to up you. to you. Yeah, but yeah, I definitely want to see him fight uh, Demetrius Andrade. I'd like to see that fight, and you know, even even one of the Charlo brothers too. Okay. Yeah. You know I, what I really saw with Canelo in the in the Callum fight. Obviously, I'm um, not. Uh, I don't have the most educated eye for boxing, but it seemed to me like he had a like he was really understood when to start sitting down on his shots and really really start ramping up the power. Yeah. Um, you know, like those first, what, three, four rounds, his de- defense, 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 yeah. defense. And then as the f- as the dialogue of the fight continued to express itself, yeah. he started sitting down on those punches yeah. a little bit more. I was like, wow. I mean, and just by, by those last two rounds, he just had him totally yeah. dismantled, you know? Yeah. Um, the state of boxing in, in mixed martial arts, I know you don't follow MMA as, as closely, but... This has been like a common um, a common refrain was like these 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 MMA guys have no hands, um, you know. I I would like to say, probably when you're done like squeezing, mm-hmm. did you ever wrestle? No, you, man, you clinch somebody, like in like this or like in a tight clinch, yeah. and then try to throw a punch afterwards. Your arms are full of blood, so it's very difficult. Okay, so I think that maybe leads to some of like the 
in MMA contests, you see people almost like pushing their punches because yeah. they have no snap left. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, when you watch MMA, has the boxing, has the hands gotten better at all? Or do you still feel like the hands are like in the Stone Age when it comes to mixed martial arts? Um, you know, it, do, do you get any MMA guys come come to Flawless? Um, not so much, man. I, and, yeah. You know, I it's it's different. Yeah. You know, it's different, and I really try to to stay away from um, to getting involved in Stay in your lane. You know what I mean? I, okay. I think it has its place, okay. but I think it's different. I, you know, credit to those guys. I don't know how they, I don't know how they do it. Like, I don't like, I, I specifically tried to master one craft hours and hours and hours, not only just watching film, but practice, you know, being a practitioner, like hours of just the footwork, the, you know, the science of it, the angles, understanding range, timing, so many things go into one thing. And it's like, I dedicated my life to it, trying to figure it out and trying to master it. These guys got three or four different disciplines a week that they have to focus on. And I'm like, I don't I don't know how you guys do it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and like I said, credit to them because but I just, you know, you go to you go to one boxing coach and he's got his own philosophy, his own uh, method of training. So he's telling he's teaching you that. And then the next day you're going to your Muay Thai coach who's going, who may have a completely different. Yeah, it's a mess. Yeah, man. It, it, it's it, a mess. It, it's just it's it's just tough. So um, yeah, so um, you know I, I, I'm I'm friends with those guys like the uh, Danny Castillo. They you know I've mm -hmm. been I've I've worked with them some uh, Benavidez. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so they've been they've been to the gym, um, but yeah, it's 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 a tough man. So I I would I would just I like focusing just on one one thing boxing and. Sure. You know, and a lot of things change once you get involved with uh, MMA because you're worrying about, you know, different different weapons as well. You're worrying about the knees and the legs. That changes range. That changes timing. Yeah. So I think to go back to your question, they can box. Those guys can box. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They just don't dedicate the, the hours that I that I would put into it. Right? I used to mm -hmm. box with Nick and Nate. They're competitive in, in sparring with just straight boxing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I, I mean – and you got guys like John Jones. I think you look at more striking than boxing, right? Got it. Look at it as, as striking. striking. What kind general. of striker is he, right? So yeah. John Jones may not be a super good boxer, but he's a phenomenal striker, right? So he's mm -hmm. able to put it all together, the hands, the elbows, the knees, the kicks. So, you know, I look at when I look at MMA, I look at it as striking versus boxing, right? Got because it. boxing is, is completely different, right? You can't, you know, a lot of the MMA guys don't, like to use uh, like a jab to the body or even get low for the body shots because they got to worry about knees, knees and, kicks, and kicks, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it just changes It changes the, the whole the whole landscape when you talk about real estate, talk about timing, talk about range. It's a lot different than world-class boxing skills. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Good, good fundamentals with understanding how to turn over your punch, uh, you know, build, you know, those things are, you know, pretty much straight punches, I think. Are, are, are good for, you know, if I'm teaching an MMA fighter, I would just focus on real fundamental stuff. Because, mm, I mean, gotcha. it, boxing I teach from the ground up, but it's like you're not even wearing shoes, man, and when you fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so and your stance your stance is going to be a little different. It's different yeah. So it's like if I'm trying to build you from the ground up, I'm teaching you, you know, shoulder width apart, staggered, toes pointing, uh, you know, at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. But then, you know, when you have you to change that stance yeah, to you, protect you, for the kicks. Yeah, you too. change it all, right? So, yeah. you know, yeah. So I try to focus on on strictly boxing. I can show you some things that will help you with uh, with your with your MMA. But you know, I, I I get I get fulfillment out of teaching teaching boxing, right? Very cool. We have uh, another coach in the gym, Angie. She knows kickboxing. She knows a uh, little bit of uh, Muay Thai and stuff like that. So if you want to learn that, I'll, I'll send you to her. But yeah, I, I try to be a specialist in my craft. That's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Hey, last question before I get you out of here. Um, where can folks learn more about flawless boxing uh, in the Sacramento area? Um, your website. For yeah. So, yeah. So we're at 600 Broadway, Sacramento Land Park area. Website is uh, flawlessboxingfit.com. Uh, we're on Instagram, flawlessboxing on Instagram. I have a personal page. Uh, like we talked about, we do a lot of tutorials. Mm -hmm. Uh, flawless underscore Gonzalez on Instagram, and yeah, you can just Google flawless boxing. We'll pop up. Uh, but yeah, but the you know we're all about progressing, progressing our member base in you know where they want to go. It doesn't matter if they want to uh, just come in to lose weight, get in shape, or go on to be a professional boxer. We have uh, a program or a path that we can draw out for you 
to get you where you want to go. And all of the things that I just named, the Instagram, the website, all those, the YouTube page, all those provide resources to where you can utilize to try to get to where you want to go. Very cool. And you're doing virtual now too. Yeah, we got the virtual training that you can attend a live class. We have the on demand to where you can train at your own time and pick it out. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Hey, buddy, thanks for coming on. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. South side, we gon' set this party, y'all fry. West side, west side.